Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Saturday morning prayer service. Um, I encourage you to come up closer. There's a lot of people, a lot of our women are out at women's retreat this weekend. So um, it might be a little bit smaller in the room. So I encourage you to move up if you want to. Um, we're going to continue to pray this morning for our church and churches in the region. Um, if you think about it, we can also be praying for the women who are at retreat right now, um, that they would just be blessed as they're up there. So this morning, um, I felt like the Lord wanted to just release hope into the room that as we pray, um, that we pray from a place of hope. We pray from a place of trusting that the Lord is powerful, authoritative, and he knows what he's doing. Um, and so I was reminded of in 2 Kings chapter 6, when Elisha's servant um, is worrying and, and um, in verse 15 it says now when the attendant of the man of God Elisha had risen early and gone out behold an army with horses and chariots was circling the city and his servant said to him this is hopeless my master what are we to do and sometimes we can come into the presence of the Lord and we're like God this is hopeless this looks like a really big thing that feels impossible and Elisha said to him do not be afraid for those who are with us are greater than those who are with them then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes so that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And so God, this morning we come to you and we confess our, um, our doubt sometimes. We confess our fear, we confess our anxiety. God, we confess, God, just how overwhelming things can feel in certain times. God, we throw those things at your feet. We throw those worries at your feet this morning. And we, tr we ask that you would open our eyes just like Elisha's servant. Open our eyes to see that this is what you're doing in our region. Open our eyes to be able to see that you are still on the throne. Open our eyes to see that you are faithful to the end, that you have not left us, that you lead in love. God, I ask that you would release, God, um, even more power, God, even more, God. Um, I just ask for even prophetic vision to go forth this morning as we pray, God. I ask that you would lift our vision higher from the circumstances that we see in the natural. I pray for prophetic eyes this morning to be able to see the plans that you have for our church and churches in the region. God, we thank you that you love your church. We thank you that it is the apple of your eye. We thank you that you hold your church as a royal diadem in your hand, God. We thank you that you call it precious, God. We thank you that Jesus is sitting on the throne at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for men and women to come to you for men and women to walk into the greatness and the um, the calling that you have for them and even more in the growth that you have for them and so we partner with you today God and we say have your way God in every way have your way in every way in Jesus name amen
against me. And if my God is for me, then who could be against me? And if my God is for me, then what could stand against me? And if my God is for me, then who could be against me? And if my God is for me, then what could stand against me? And if my God is for me, then what could stand against me? And if my God is for me, then what could stand against me? And if my God is for me, then what can stand against me? And if my God is for me, then what could stand against me?
your spirit let it come 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 down let it live your world let it come 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 down we're asking for the Oh! 
Revelation 1, verse 12, when John was on Patmos, he heard the voice of the Lord. So it says in verse 12, when I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in the right hand, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid the right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and the grave. And verse 15 again says, his feet were polished like bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered mighty ocean waves. Father, John heard the voice of the risen one. And in the services this weekend, there will be people who will not know which way to turn, but we pray they hear the voice of the risen one. And just like John, they will turn, their hearts will turn, and their eyes will be opened, and they will see and let the spirit of revelation of the living Christ be known in our services this weekend. Let the encounter of the Holy Spirit Spirit changed lives up in destinies that would look like they were going to head off a cliff, but turn them around and save them, Jesus. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of life, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of knowing that he knows us comes alive in our services. And that as he held the keys, it held the keys to the prison cells. John was in prison on the island, but he was not in prison because he knew the Messiah. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that people who have believed lies and excuses and any reason to hold back, that they will see the one who holds the keys and is opening the doors and bringing them out. And Father, let every oppression be broken. Let every darkness be rolled back in our services in the name of Jesus. And let the Spirit of God move. And where there's need for healing in the body and healing in the mind, let your revelation shake off the shackles and break the chains and make alive that which has been dead. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
God, that's the cry of our heart this morning. God, come and have your glory. Come and make your glory known, God, in this place, in our church, God, in this region. Jesus, this is what we desire. We desire for you to be close as possible here in this room, God. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing. God, I ask that you would just increase, God, your presence. Would you continue in this room to give us a vision of who you are? Give us a vision of who, you, who we pray to every morning, God. Jesus, I ask that you would make yourself known in this room. I invite you to stand with me as we continue to pray for our church and churches in this area. And I just simply want to pray out of Psalm 46. It says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And I love that because the Lord of armies is with us. He commands the hosts of angels and he's powerful and authoritative. And yet it says the God of Jacob is our stronghold. The God of Jacob who is close, nearby, intimate, um, individual to, to each one of us and what we need. And so we have this great, big, authoritative God who bows down low to meet us where we're at, to speak to us face to face. And so I just want to pray for our church here that we would know the grand power of God and yet we would also be encountered with the in intimate um, love of Jesus. And so God, I pray over our church, God, over our ministries, Jesus, that we would not, God, keep you one way or the other. We would not stand in fear and forget your love, God. We would not always know your intimacy, but forget your power, God. I ask Jesus, Jesus, that you would give us a vision of who you are. Give us a vision of the powerful God that we serve. Jesus, we thank you that you bowed down low. We thank you that you took on human form. We thank you that you died and rose again and you came near and you pitched your tent among us, God. I ask God that you would make that real to us, God. Thank you, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of us. Thank you that you promise to transform us and renew us and regenerate us, God. Thank you that your processes do not stop when we say yes to you, but thank you that you are continuing to grow each and every day through each individual in this room, God. We lift up the rock to you and I ask that you would give, that you would give encounters of who you are. You would give encounters with the man Christ Jesus. We pray for services tomorrow that as Pastor Rick speaks and the worship band plays, we ask that your presence would go forth. We ask for visions of who you are in all of your glory, just like David was um, praying out of Revelation 1. God, this man, Christ Jesus, who bowed down low, this is who we serve. So I just encourage you right now to lift up your voices. Lift up your voices, declare who he is. As we're praying and as we're declaring who he is, we're praying that the God would reveal himself to each person um, in our church and in this region, in Jesus' name.
shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better sing your way is better sing your way your way is better you to do something right now. I want to, I'm going to ask you if you would please just close your eyes. I believe the Lord spoke to me and he said he's hovering over us right now. You know, there's sometimes there's words of exhortation that God is calling us closer to him. And I believe this is a moment right now. I'm just a person, but I believe that the Lord is going to speak through me this morning for this house. This whole week, the Lord has been speaking to me and dealing with me about the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. In my own personal life, 50 years ago, I had said something to the Lord that I heard him, and he reminded me of that. And when I 
ask for forgiveness. I felt such a strength and a peace that I haven't had in 50 years. You know, if you study revival, in all revivals, you will see deliverance in a mighty, mighty way. And I believe that God is going to bring in those that are demon-possessed, those that are sick and healing, that, that are so need not just a preached word, but they need the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. It says in Luke 4, Jesus got up to read Isaiah 61. And this is what I'm praying today, and I'm exhorting all of us to believe that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, is upon this house, it's upon us individually, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, in another week, it's going to be Passover. And I believe it's significant this year for us to understand that God has passed over us, our sins and those things that have hindered us. He wants to bring us as a body into our Jordan, across into the promised land and the things that he has had for us I believe the Lord spoke to me and he said, the things that you thought that you lost have not been lost, they've been hidden. I have hidden them for you, saith the Lord your God. The enemy has told you that because you did this or you did that, that, that you've lost the thing, the promises and the gifts and the callings and those things that I've called you to do. That's not so, saith the Lord. That was not my voice, but that was the voice of the enemy. For surely I will do that which I said I was going to do in this house. You will cross over. No longer will you have manna, but you will take those things from the enemy that I've stored up for you, saith the Lord. Be encouraged this day, for the captives will be set free by my spirit and by my anointing. But humble yourself before the Lord your God, so that I can exalt you in this house. Be not afraid that the enemy would try to discourage you or try to uh, uh, say that the, the enemy is too strong. No, those days are gone. I am creating the new thing. I am doing the new thing in this house, saith the Lord. So be encouraged this day. You have the anointing. You have the power because of my spirit that dwelleth within you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I know where you're at in the Bay Area. I know that the enemy is surrounding this, this area, saith the Lord, even in the city of Danville. But be encouraged, I will give you strength. So you speak forth. You declare, you decree the thing that I say, saith the Lord, for I will bring my word be to pass. I am not a man that I should lie, but I am a man that fulfills promises and destiny, saith the Lord. I sing as I pray. 
God, we just receive that word, God, from Brian. We thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your promises. We ask for more, God. We ask for eyes to see. We ask, God, for chains to be broken. Right now, we're going to um, walk through the room and pray over chairs. We love to do this on Saturdays as we um, pray for services tomorrow intentionally. And so um, you're welcome to walk through, place your hand on every chair. And I just, I want you to be praying for the things that um, we've prayed for today, the things that the Lord's put on your heart. Um, I just really feel like the Lord wants to reveal himself the truth of who he is in a deep way. And so as we pray this morning, God, we just ask that you would make yourself known. We ask that you would come into our midst in a deeper way, God. We pray for deep encounter, God, with the man, Christ Jesus. We pray, God, for deep encounters, God. We pray for um, prison doors opened, God, chains broken off, God, the prisoners set free, God, tomorrow as they walk into this room, God, we pray for the grace, God, to walk in freedom, God, the grace, God, for burdens to be lifted off. Thank you, Jesus, that you carry our burdens, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you carry our fears and our anxieties, God. I just pray and I release, God, peace over our congregation, God, everybody dealing with anxiety, God, everybody dealing with fear and the worries of this life, God, I just release peace, God, into this room, that there's um, a grace, God, for peace as they walk into this room, as they worship you, as we listen to your word, God, as we commune, God, with the body, I pray that you would release your peace, God. Would you release your grace, God? Would you release the comfort of the Holy Spirit in our midst, God? We ask for more of you. We ask for eyes to be open to the truth of who you are. Come and have your way at the end of the day, God. We say, come and have your way in the rock, God, in Danville, in the valley, God, in the body of believers in the Bay Area, God, come and have your way that there would be um, nothing in the way, God, no obstructions, God, we just have your way, God. Give us a surrendered heart in Jesus' name.
God, we thank you for all of your promises, God, to your people, to us, your church, your bride. We thank you that you have plans to um, grow us, God, to um, give us a hope and a future, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your promises. And God, as we close out today, I just pray that your presence would go with us, God. Um, in the rest of our weekend, Jesus, I ask that your presence would hover over us deeply. Would you continue revealing who you are, God? Filling us up to overflowing, God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your work, God. We thank you for your power, and we seal all of this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning as we pray for the church. Love to see everybody come out for it. It's just so beautiful to get to pray with you all. Um, and with that, I bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow for services. Amen.